Gamers, we have gathered here today to check a brand new patch. Brand new, I'm telling you. So let's get into it. This is hot, right out of the oven. First and foremost, we hope that everyone uh, is staying safe in these unprecedented times. Uh, while we've been hunkered down and large-scale events have been temporarily halted, we've been very fortunate that the community's content creator has stepped up to provide us a seemingly endless amount of StarCraft. Hey, I got you, okay? I got you. Uh, we're always thankful for your passion and creativity. With that said, we wanted to take time to provide an update to our current thoughts about the state of the game as well as our plans for the next balance test mod. Here we They mean Wardy? Bitch, please. Okay. Don't even give me... Okay. They talked about me. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They mean all content creators. But, you know. Anyway. Thought we had concerns in TVZ last season map pool. Considering the current maps, the matchup looks healthy from both a gameplay and balance perspective. After last year's big patch, we saw a steep rise in mech strategies followed by a steep decline. Because it's shit, that's why. It's shit. Thought buy is still the most prominent strategy for Terran. We're seeing a slight resurgence in mech in recent months. Uh, possibly inspired by some of the new maps. True, I can see that. From the Zerg side, mid-game strategies seem very diverse as well, but perhaps most notably, endgame seems to have improved drastically with Brutalord Turtling seeming like a thing of the past. Wow, who would have thought that nerfing infested Terrans would lead to playable late game? And scenarios where both sides fight tooth and nail. Dude, don't bring me tooth into this, please. Uh, small pieces of territory, commonplace, okay. TVP. While we view TVP to be relatively even and games tend to end less abruptly than last year, we still believe there's room for improvement to this matchup in terms of design. For instance, even though we're seeing fewer games that end abruptly with two base tank pushes, a lot of mid-game uh, a lot of mid-game gameplay still centers around the threat of this type of push, uh, which tends to lead to one-dimensional mid-games. I agree. I've said this many times before. Any significant changes we'd want to make to impact this match, I would primarily have a goal of opening it up rather than trying to balance it. True! ZVP. First, good news. We're seeing a ton of diversity from both sides. Well, I don't know if it's good news, but let's see the rest. Uh, diversity from both sides in the early and mid-game uh, stages of the matchup. From the proto side, we're seeing many varied openers and small re refinements. As from the Zerg side, we're seeing greater diversity in mid-game unit compositions than we've possibly ever seen in the history of Starcraft 2. However, we do view this matchup as favoring Zerg. Especially in the late game, as evidenced by the lack of uh, lack, uh, lack of late game PUC play in the recent months. And after talking to professional level pros players, we've identified the most common threads in their complaints about the matchup. The effectiveness of Queen in defending early game pressure. The effectiveness of Baneling both as a combat unit and in a harassment role. The inability of clearing creep through the mid late game without uh, necess necessitating the presence of the entire Spurtos army. That's also true. Uh, Terran does have an easier time clearing the creep. Just the way that armies work. The difficulty of late game with a focus with a focus on the risk versus reward of the abduct feedback interaction. TVT and ZVZ, we both we view both these matchups to be in a good place, with TVT especially notable for having slightly more dynamic games compared to last year. Uh, okay, I'll give my opinion on this so far. So um again, I'm not gonna say what I think in general because most of you guys know what my opinion is um because i've talked about this for like years now and not many things have changed uh i think that this cur uh, current map pool has helped terran uh, update patch command doesn't matter doesn't matter just calm down in the chat just chill um tvz Terran in general in this map pool is a lot better for Terran due to maps. So you don't necessarily need to balance the game. The, the map changes also help. And this map pool is definitely the best Terran map pool we've seen for a long time. Okay? A long time. Um, and, you know, we already saw with, uh, you know, I, I feel like Terrans are beating Zergs. Not more than Zergs being Terrans, but it's more of an even game. Uh, TVP, I also think that that matchup had problems where Protoss was favored. 
but I think that that may, maybe even shifted a little bit into Terran favor because of the maps. Um, ZVP, from what I know, this is really, really Zurich favorite, and it's really, really hard to win as a Protoss. So, I think there's a lot of problems in this matchup, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that more when we see what the changes are. TVT and TVZ, I mean, they're mirror matchups. PvP, we believe PvT has two core issues, the volatility of early game and resulting uh, difficulty of holding a natural expansion, the difficulty of holding a third. Ever since the removal of the Mothership Core and its replacement with the Shield Battery, we've run into some stability issues with PvP. From what we gather, the current general understanding of early game seems to be that proxy robotics facility builds that are, are extremely strong in the matchup to the point of over-centralizing the meta game. This build is also a large part of why holding a natural build is so difficult and resulting games seem to be so volatile. Another prevalent concern is the ability for Protoss to hold three bases. In the past when the key heavy hitters in PvP were Colossal Disruptors, the Defender had a significant advantage um, in that they would generally have one or two more Colossi or Disruptors in their def uh, defense due to travel distance. But now that Zealots and Archons are primarily mid-game units, with Immortal being less, much less potent than either Colossal Disruptors, this travel distance is negated. And the Defender often can't make up the distance when slightly behind. This is very true. With all these changes in mind, here are some changes we'll be featuring in the next balance mod to potentially be added to the live game in a future patch. Terra, Widowmine. Drilling Claws upgrade no longer grants Widowmine invisibility. Instead, the existence of an armory will grant Widowmine's invisibility. Okay. The red laser attachment for Widomines will now communicate to the existence of an armory instead of existence of the drilling claws upgrade. Um, okay, so for those who don't know, the the problem in PvT uh pre this map pool for a while um was you know the same way that Protoss cannot harass the Zerg? Well, at the highest level, Terran cannot harass the Protoss. Because, um, basically, Protoss, these days, just opens Blink, just like Zerg has Queens, and they're safe against anything Terran can do. Anything. You don't need, you know, there's, there's nothing that Terran can harass you with that you, you should open a Robo. You always just go Blink. That's just how it goes. And before that patch where they made Widow Mines, uh, you know, having Drilling Claws upgraded that gave it stealth, um, you know, even when it exploded, Protoss actually had to open Robo or risk of taking severe economic damage because the Widow Mines would remain burrowed. So what they're going here is the middle ground. So you're not going to have Widow Mines being cloaked even after they fire from the start, but you're not going to need to upgrade him either you'll need an armory. So for the people, I see some people are confused. Basically, um, I don't think the, the Widow Mines will burrow fast at all, ever again. I think what will happen is when you get your armory, they once they burrow, they're invisible even after they shoot. So the Protoss will need an obs uh, observer in order to clear them up. So this 100% will become the meta in TVP to do what am I drops again. I can definitely see a reactor factories, uh, openings and, and medevacs with armories because this will force the Protoss to stay defensive and it will kind of um, make the Protoss play a little bit safer, thus not getting ahead in economy as they are right now. But again, the maps do favor Terra, so this matchup is not as bad currently. Terran players often talk about feeling economically behind, especially in the TVP matchup. While we're opening, uh, while we're open to making changes to Terran economy, a blanket buff is not something we're currently looking at, uh, at, considering the state of TVZ, as well as planned changes for the Zerg. Though TVP economy is a complicated issue, we believe the 
primary reasons for Terrence falling behind in this matchup are changes made in the transition from odds to legacy. That's what I just talked about. Some key ones include changes to Chrono Boost mules and Widow Mines revealing themselves after de detonating. Thus reducing the importance of early game detection, which allow products to take a third earlier and more easily. Literally what I just talked about. With the line of thinking, with that line of thinking and TV in mind, we're looking to make this change for, uh, the, for the following reasons. To encourage more dynamic gameplay in TVP. First, we believe Widow Mines naturally lend themselves to more multi-prong tactics and drop play over their siege tank counterparts. In addition, because of the increased strain placed on observer placement, we believe this change will create more openings for Terrans to drop in general. To put in direct economic pressure on Protoss by increasing the number of potential Terran openers and putting strain on their defense across multiple bases. We believe that this change could encourage more thoughtful positioning of Stalkers as well as forced earlier foot and no one's going to make earlier foot and cannons. Uh, no one. Both of which detract from the power of Protoss', Protoss primary army to help ease the transition to, to, to infantry upgrades. So, I mean... Uh, is this going to fix the matchup? Is this going to make the matchup perfect? I don't know, but this is a step towards what they're trying to fix. Everything they said here is literally the things that I've I've talked to. I, I told you guys I've talked to Blizzard before, and every time I talked to them, I never said hey, Colossus are OP. You know, like people in gold to do that. It's it's about it's about how the matchup is played, and this was always the issue in TVP for a long time now. The economy, the 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 the, the upgrades, the Terran transitioning, the Terran two base strength power. The only thing that I'm worried about this is that two base Terran lanes might be too strong because of the current map pool combined with this change. On the other hand, right? This is a slight buff for Mech, so. Mech is going from hot, steamy garbage against Protoss to just hot garbage. I mean, I'll take it. You can transition easier into Mech having an armory. You'll have Buddha Mines. It's not bad. Um, so, I, I don't think any Terran will be upset about this. And uh, I think, again, it's a change between what we used to have and what we have now. It, it's somewhere in the middle. Oh, the Drilling Claws upgrade is still there. Oh, so it just makes the Woodman's burrow faster. Okay, okay. Zerg. Uh, uh. I mean, hey. I've suggested this change for two years now to Blizzard. I've even mentioned it in my little patch uh, balance thing that I did on my own. I think this will... You know how I always said when they change something to the Zerg? It's nothing. It's like tickling their balls, you know? This is like doing a fucking jump kick straight into their nuts. Prepare for an onslaught of Zerg tears flooding the oceans... We're gonna go to 99% water on planet Earth. Just wait until this hits the Zerg players. This is going to be... Woo! Be insane. Zerg tears will literally keep us afloat, okay? Um, this, guys, this is... You don't understand how big this is. This is kicking them in the nuts and then just... And then just... Kicking them twice more. Oh man, I'm so excited for this. Well deserved. This is a huge nerf. Uh, I'm gonna say this is a huge nerf and a well needed one. I think anyone with a. If any player in the world can say, look into my eyes and say, um, oh, Zerg Queen range is fine, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I don't think anyone with a straight face can say that. Even Zerg players, queens defend absolutely everything. Banshees, Medivacs, Liberators, fucking Vikings, Void Rays, Oracles, Phoenix. They defend everything. And they are a fucking hatchery unit. That is insane.
And I'm so glad that they nerfed it finally. Because the reason, for those who don't know, history cutie knows, Professor Cutie, is because Liberators were too strong in Legacy of the Void Beta and their range was crazy, so on some maps you couldn't hit the Liberators. So the reason why they increased Queen range is so they can defend Liberators. And then they nerfed Liberators like four times since then, but Queens remain unchanged. Which doesn't make any sense. So, yeah. The Queen's increased anti-air range was introduced at a point when uh, defending both Liberators and range upgrade Liberators were a concern in early game. But with both um, map design tightening up to account for Liberators and range upgrade Liberators receiving minus one range, now might be, no, no, now is a good time to revert to this change to more empower early game air harassment from other races. Yes. Yes. Yes, Bish. Our biggest concern is how instrumental large number of queens typically are at dealing with battle cruisers openers, which did not exist in the past. However, if this becomes an issue, our current thinking is that we prefer to address it from the battle cruiser side. Listen to me. Terran players. Protoss players, listen to me. This is very important. When this ship is getting tested, do not open battle cruisers. Do not open air units. Okay? Don't open Oracle. Don't open battle cruisers. Let this change slide in and then we shit on them when they least expect it. Okay? We cannot risk of this change not going through. We cannot risk it. If you make a battle cruiser and someone sends me a screenshot, you're perma ban on my Discord, on my stream, and on my YouTube. Do not make a battle cruiser. I don't want to see Oracles either, or Phoenix. Nothing that Queen can shoot, don't make it. We'll just let this one slide in, and then we kick them in the nuts. That's our plan. <clears throat> All right, Baneling. Centrifugal hooks no longer grants Baneling plus five health. Oh. This is the... Is it my birthday? Holy sh... Is it December? Centrifuge hooks no longer get... Dude, Zerg getting nerfed left and right. Holy shit! Centrifuge hooks cost decrease... I mean, who cares about the cost? Zergs have infinite money. Am I right? Similarly, Banings originally gained plus, one health, plus 5 health at a time when Zerg were struggling in mid-game. I remember that as well. Fast forward to today, Zergs are not struggling because they're winning every single tournament. Um, oh, sorry, that's not what... Uh, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Where most uh, common piece of feedback we receive from both Terran Protoss players is the strength of Baneling in a variety of roles. Internally, we consider a variety of options to adjust either the bailing or the unit that interacts with the bailing in more targeted ways. But because the feedback that we received was that the bailing was generally strong, we decided to take a more generalized approach. I Okay, so as someone who plays all three races, I play Zerg the least. Uh, and I know there's going to be that one baboon that's like, you hate Zerg. Yeah, I do. Um, what can I say? I don't hate Zerg players, but I hate Zerg. Uh, and when I play Zerg, I hate myself. So, there's that. Uh, I mainly play Protoss and Terran. And from Terran point of view, I don't think Banelings are that big of an issue. I feel like Banelings, weirdly enough, are more of an issue as Protoss. Because they will just evaporate your whole armies. And there's actually no efficient way of dealing with Banelings uh, as a Protoss. Uh, the only way you can deal with them are Archons, hoping that Zerg runs all Banelings into them, or Storm, which are both not really reliant way to dealing with Banelings. So, yeah. An initial feedback from professional players, a concern brought, by the, uh, brought up was the difficulty of holding onto four bases against a three-base Terran by a push with this change, as the feedback surrounding Banelings centers around their strength over the course of a long game rather than an initial power spike, we'd like to tried decreasing centrifugal hooks. Literally, no Protoss and Terran player cares about reduced cost. Cost, go for it. This is a big nerf as well. Um, Infester, my Crowbow Shroud no longer requires an upgrade. I mean, I've always said this, like my Crowbow Shroud is just shit, guys. Like, I've said this, Zerg, uh, uh, Infester, my Crowbow Shroud, 
was too weak in its current form and having an upgrade it, it just did not make any sense so this is the least they can do and it can probably buff it more in general we're trying to craft noble abilities we try to tune them towards being powerful however with the perception of zerg last year we try to be more careful aka they didn't want to add another powerful ability to infester because they just nerfed infester for bringing the most broken unit in the game um this changes one Further step we'd like to make towards ungating the power behind Microbial Shroud. <laughs> what power? Am I right? Am I right? The three Zerg players in the chat, what what power? Uh, and we're open to future alterations should we see the need. Creep Tumor. Armored tag removed. Light tag added. What? Armored tag removed. Light tag added. What? It targets Adepts, Oracle, and Hellions. Okay, Hellions, okay. How is Oracle gonna clear tumors? Like what, are you gonna... Revelation and then kill them? I mean... I don't know. Like, I'm... Uh, th okay, this is a slight nerf to the creep. But like... This is Giga Slight. You know the, the place? No, actually, this will just help the Hellions. I was thinking, like, maybe Adepts can somehow, somehow control the creep. But with Hellions, you can out micro the Lings. You cannot out micro the Lings with Adepts. So, I don't... I don't like this change, to be honest. Doesn't... This is one of those things that sound really cool on paper, but in the actual game, it will just not do anything. Like, you guys know when they added the Adept change, when it like shades, it gains attack speed and stuff? You guys remember that? And then I said it's not gonna do anything, and literally did not do anything. Yeah, this will not do anything. I mean, again, is it a slight nerf? Sure. Is it gonna change anything? I mean, maybe you kill a creep tumor or two? I think that nerf is as big as queen range. Bruh. All right, next, Protoss. I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Dude, who... Who gave that suggestion? Huh? Battery overcharge. Uh, keep reading. Okay, okay. Wait, shield regeneration? Wait, what is this? Wait, what the fu- Wait, what? Dude, they stole my name. Effect overcharges a target shield battery. Wait, what is this? Wait, what? Wait, no. Battery overcharge ruined? Wait, uh, overcharges a target shield battery, increases its shield restoration rate by 100%, and causing it to regenerate 100 energy over 21 seconds. What the fuck does this mean? Does this mean that shield battery will get a shield, like shield regen on its HP and regen the energy? Oh, shield restoration rate. Hmm. Okay, anyway, now we're talking. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Eh, 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 eh. Tick, tick, tick. How much does, how much does shield battery heal now? Wait, can we test these changes? Are they are they in the game? Oh shit! Are we gonna test this after uh, after I finish this? Read fucking notes. Listen, don't swear at me, or I'm gonna. Okay, we can test this after. This edition is intended to generally reinforce for us as defenders' advantage and help for us flare stalers in PvP, both on two bases and on three bases. Dude, they took my name. Come on, man. Should call it. We should change it to Cutie Overcharge. Yeah, can we beast the Overcharge from now on? No one call it Battery Overcharge. Call it Beast the Overcharge or Cutie Overcharge. Don't use Battery. That's. You got something at least. Eh. All right. The initial numbers for this ability were specifically designed with PvP and proxy robotics builds in mind. This is a testament to the strength of this ability. A stalker being restored by an Overcharge. Battery would also survive over seven volleys from a typical four stalker one immortal poke up from two. Oh, wait, that's big. 
Wait, what the fuck? Seven volleys of four stalkers and one immortal shooting? And now it's only two? That's almost four times as, as... Beastie Battery. Ooh, I like that. Can we copy Strike Blizzard? Um, this allows the defending player with two Nexus to leverage the next century as a key resource to defend against aggressive attacks, granting them a leeway to build fewer shield batteries. While the opponent bounces between, bounces back and forth between their main, who is bouncing between main and natural? Don't you just bust a natural straight away? Against typical 2-3 base aggression PvP, we see this uh, ability as a powerful form of defender's advantage, effectively quadrupling the effectiveness of shield battery, allowing it to restore 1.2k shields, bish. That's a lot of shields. However, this ability still has a counterplay in the form of bursting down the targeted shield battery, such as with crosshair bombs, veilings, or simply, okay? Sieging the pros base, such as siege thing is destroying, okay, but, okay. We view this addition as having the most impact on PvP. <sighs> All right, I don't like this. I'm gonna just say it, I don't like this. Except the name, which is great, I don't like this. I'm gonna tell you why. This is not good. Can somebody in the chat tells me why this is not good? This is like a lesson. I need a I need like an overlay with me in the classroom and a teacher's. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh uh No. No, no, no. No, this is why. Are you ready? Because what was the one thing that screwed Terran over time that I always complain about? Options and design. So this is basically next. You can no longer one base in PvP. That's it. You're gonna have to expand. And this is removing the options once again from our players do I one base or do I two base? Now it's like, well, you got two base. And you're like, well, I want all in. Well, you can't. Sorry, bud. Of course you can. Are you reading this? It restores 1.2k shields? The fuck are you gonna bust that? Who's going to have 75 energy? The moment Nexus finishes, it has 50. Bruh. One base is boring. That doesn't matter, that's irrelevant. That, like, who gives a shit if you don't like one base? The point is, there are people that do. And the point is, we're going back to, oh, well, you're just doing this thing that I have to do as well because we don't have an option. If, if pro Protoss players figure out an exact build to defend while using this, you won't be able to kill them. And then the meta will be, no one will do one bases again. And that's it. This is, this is a possible issue. I don't know how this is going to play out. I don't know if this, is, this makes it so that like, you cannot be busted if it just helps a little bit. Although 1.2k shields is a lot of fucking a little bit, okay. I don't know. I didn't test it. I will test it soon. But this is a potential problem in a way that Terran got screwed over by removing the options. Why are people saying you're not going to have that energy? When you do a fast expand... Okay, check this out. Okay, check this out. Ready? You do a fast expand, you fucking open your eyes, you hallucinate Phoenix across the map, and you see your opponent doesn't have a Nexus, okay? That means he's all in it. So when your Nexus finishes, you put a fucking... You don't use energy, and then you have this, this ability. There it is. Why are you guys making it so complicated like you're gonna have to wait for an hour for this? You will literally have it within 20 seconds of when Nexus finishes. It's not a long time. The question is, can pro players make a build so it's perfectly kind of crafted so you can defend anything assuming you react properly? If that is the case, the one base build will disappear. Okay, and how do I know this? 
because I've played this game for 10 years and every time there's a patch and when I read an ability or what unit does and I say how it's going to play out, it always plays out like that. When I say ability is useless, it never gets used. When I say it's going to be OP, it shit's broken. Okay? I'm generally right. I'm, maybe I'm shit at life, but I know StarCraft and I'm telling you, if this is unbreakable, which I don't know, we'll test, the pro players will test, it will remove the one base in PvP, which is bad. I understand people hate one base PvPs, and I agree that it shouldn't just be one base, one base, one base. But if this removes the option, then it's shit. Because then players that generally like to all in, and maybe they're known for all in, all inning off of one base, then they're forced to play as everyone else. You haven't gotten three chrono boost. What the fuck? What are you? T what three chrono boost? What? Listen to me. Whatever drugs you're on, go to a doctor and get help. You just keep repeating. What about three chrono boost? What? Why would your chrono boost be getting all in? You go. Of course, you're gonna save the energy. Less units to defend. Uh, how is it less you to defend your two nexus? The opponent, oh, listen. Opponent has one nexus, okay? One, let me fucking, hold on. Hold on, I'm fucking done, dude. Hold on. Give me a moment. This is your opponent's nexus, okay? One, you see that? One, one, okay? This is your two bases, okay? There you go, two base. So if opponent chrono boosts army with this and you chrono boost army with that, that leaves this fucking nexus with energy to fucking overcharge the battery. Okay, I'm glad we got that through. <clears throat> anyway, let's keep going. Jesus. Okay, Oracle. Sometimes you just gotta try it, okay? They have 8th range stupid. Are you actually... Are you actually this fucking dense? Holy shit. You're like a fucking brick wall. Jeez. He's like, oh, oh, it has range. <laughs> Well, maybe don't put them in your fucking main base. Don't put shield batteries in your main base. Put them in your fucking natural where you're getting defended. Jesus Christ. Modern trucker, dude. Do you want me to draw it for you? Holy. Getting me heated over here. Okay. Oracle. Revelation energy cost decreased from 50 to 25. Oh, that's how we kill creep tumor. Don't worry. Next time... Let God damn it, you're gonna make me open paint. If there's still some people that don't understand the basic of like baboon fucking way of thinking for shield batteries, let me know and I'll open paint and I'll literally draw it for you in full screen. Jesus Christ. Okay, revelation energy cost decreased from 50 to 25. Revelation cooldown increased from 2 to 10 seconds. Revelation duration decreased from 30 to 15 seconds. Ooh. Ooh. This is like a tickle, but then kick in the nuts. I don't know which one it is. Is it tickling or is it kicking? Uh, let's see. I mean, I mean, I think this is better for good products but worse for worse purposes. Now, having the revelation energy cost from 50 to 25 means you can obviously use um, twice as many revelations. And I know that, that there's that dumb guy that's like, uh -huh. isn't that two times more expensive? No, it's half, okay? You can use two times more revelations, don't worry. Uh, Revelation cooldown increased from 2 to 10 seconds. I mean, I guess they're doing this just so you can't spam it on stuff. Not a big deal, 
right? Um, and then relation duration decreased from 30 to 15. So the 30 to 15 just matches the 50 to 25. So I guess they did this in order to give the Protoss the ability to kill creep tumors with oracles, but uh, is that gonna happen? I mean, I don't know. Let's see. The This redesign of the relation ability is intended to grant an improved ability for clearing creep tumors. Okay, this is not gonna happen. This is not happening. There are many subtle implications with this redesign, but a key one we'll be looking out for is how much more effective relation will be at detecting Widow Mines, Banshees, and Dark Templar. Sure, against those, yes. Don't, this is not for cream tumors. As a precaution, we're, we've preemptively increased the cooldown of this ability to make it difficult for a single oracle to detect multiple spread out cloaked units. This change also interacts um, directly with our proposed widow mine changes, and we're hoping the net result falls in favor of the widow mine. I mean, maybe. If you do a four widow mine drop, and if you spread them out, it will favor the widow mines. Because the oracle will have maximum three revelations then, which are gonna take 30 seconds to cast. Um, so, yeah. Finally, we'll be flagging this change as another one we're especially looking for feedback on and we're likely to tweak before you hit slide. Okay, so, um, I like this as an idea to help versus Widow Mines. I see that uh, as a thing and I don't mind that at all. Um, this only makes Banshees, if you can believe it, even worse because now they have even more ways to counter it. In DTs, which, I mean, I, I don't think anyone really likes losing to DTs. I mean, obviously you don't like losing against anything, but it feels kind of extra lame when you lose to DTs in PvP. So this is, you know, it's good. And there's still ways to just split your DTs and avoid this. So I don't mind this too much. But this fact or, 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 statement that it's to help clear creep tumors that's not going to happen um are people going to use revelation sometimes to clear creep sure are oracles going to be used specifically to clear creep no that is not going to happen if you build an oracle you're still going to use your energy to harass and then if you're stacking too much energy you might pop a revelation and then activate the second oracle to clear it. But at that point, the Zerg will already have a lot of map control and they will see your oracles doing that. And then the Queens are just gonna come and shit another creep and that's it. So this is not realistic. So there it is. Um, High Templar, feedback range increased from 9 to 10. We, when we ask professional level Protoss players why they're reluctant to go into late game, the most common response is that feedback abduct interaction currently favors Zerg. True. We believe increasing feedback range to 10 is the healthiest way to balance out this interaction as it would allow High Templar to be to more effectively zone out Vipers whose abduct range is 9. Or just make Vipers not be able to abduct massive units. In the past, we would have been cautious about bringing feedback closer to the EMP range, but with the new enhanced shockwaves upgrade, we feel more comfortable making this change. When this post goes live, the balance test mode would, will have been updated with these changes. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and watching the resulting games that are played. As always, keep in mind that these changes are subject to change before they hit the ladder. Okay, real talk here. I don't care about this. Um, okay, real talk. This is big for Terran. Because you can also use Widowmine Claw Drops versus Zerg. Wow. So I think this is great for the game. This is the biggest change that we have had in a long, long, long time. Okay, this is a huge change. I don't know 
if these two are gonna go through together. I feel like Blizzard might chicken out because the Zerg tiers. I mean, I, I know guys, I, I was a pro player. The Zerg players are writing emails now. They're contacting people they know at Blizzard. They're saying they're never going to be winning anything again because this is unplayable, this is too much. How about we just remove, you know, you know, one kilo of shit from the Overlord instead because that would make the game more balanced. Um, but I really hope Blizzard doesn't listen because this right here is the main reason why Zerg mid game is so strong. It's because it's so hard to harass pro player, pro Zerg players because Queens can defend everything. So this is a huge nerf at the highest level because uh, people will be able to utilize this Terrans and Protoss as this nerf against the Zerg by, you know, max ranging the Queens while harassing the drone zones and stuff like that. You know, if you're in Gold League or Plat League, you'll probably... Let's be honest, guys. You're going to run your Oracle into Spore and three Queens anyway, and it's going to die. Um, or you're just going to run in your Banshee and it's going to attack Spore for like six seconds before it dies. So for, for most people, this is not really going to have any effect. Um, but I do think that this is a huge-ass nerf. Huge-ass nerf. And uh, it's a well-deserved one. Uh, this nerf will, what I'm, what I'm personally worried about is, this is 100% uh, deserved in ZVP, but I don't know for ZVT against Bio if this will be too big of a nerf. This I don't care. This I don't care. This is irrelevant. This is um, interesting, I'll give it that. I have to test it, which we're going to test now. So I don't know what really to think about it. Uh, but we'll get it tested. I just hope... I, 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 I don't mind it. If it helps Protoss is established in Atron PvP, I don't mind it. But if it's so strong that it removes any possibilities from actually one base all ending, that's, that's bad. Um, this, I mean, it's a change. Uh, it will help versus Widow Mines, which I don't mind. Uh, I don't like that it's also nerfing the benches further and making it even worse. I like that it's making it less volatile against DTs. Um, but no one's going to clear a creep with this. And then this, whatever. Whatever. Could you give a link to the patch notes? I will. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the Twitch chat. We're going to discuss. We're going to test the changes now for you guys on YouTube. Let me know what you think. Are we going to see floods all, all over the world from all the Zerg players? Just... I don't know. I have a strong feeling we will. I will probably be avoiding uh, forums in my Twitter because there will be... A lot of water going around let's just say that if you're watching this on youtube thank you for watching i might be releasing a video with testing these changes we'll see for you guys on twitch let's test them baby